Let me quickly run down the list for you and any new audience that just joined us. So okay. these are the top five Major League Baseball teams of the last 30 years, okay? Number five on the list is the 2017 Houston Astros. That's the cheating Astros. Number four, the 1995 Braves. Number three, the 2004 Red Sox. Number two, the 2016 Cubs. And number one, the 1998 New York Yankees. Gut reaction, how do we do on the list? Uh, well, I mean, if, if you don't have the 98 team number one, I really don't care about the other one. <laughs> the 98 team is the most important. But, yes, you, I think you got it right. Although, I don't know about the, a cheating team being in your top five. Well, that's what we want to get your thoughts on and a few other things, too, which is we've heard from several former players that you would rather, as a pitcher, let's say, face somebody who may have been taking PEDs than you would have uh, face, facing somebody who knows whether it's breaking ball or fastball. Is that true in your opinion? I, I think so. I, you know, I face many of many of guys that have been on performance enhancing drugs. So, you know, I don't, we the way they used to steal signs and location was old school. Whether it was the first or third base coach, if the catcher was opening his, le his legs too far and showing his signs, or the runner on second base. And the way we controlled it is, you know, we threw inside and maybe knocked some guys down. But now they do it a little bit different since all the iPads and the the video room is right next to the dugout. So it. it it gets to be, you know, it was, I guess, in a way, it's not surprising, but because they've involved all this this uh, technical technical stuff into the game. So, you know, it's pretty easy for these guys to figure it out. But I think so. I think I'd rather f probably face a guy using PEDs than, than knowing what's coming. Jeff, what about the argument that that same similar team – has since won the World Series. So there really was a lot of talent on that team. It really was a great team in oh, a yes. sense. Oh, there's no doubt. You know, there's no doubt there was tons of talent on that team, and they probably didn't need to uh, do what they did, whether it was the, you know, the video wires and, you know, El Tuve taking off his jersey right away, running straight into the dugout or beating the trash can or whatever. You know, other teams were probably doing the same thing. It's just that these guys got caught doing it. And, you know, it's – it's a shame that it happened. It's a shame that they got caught doing it and, and all of a sudden it became a big deal. But I guess you had to expect it. Like I said, when you have iPads and the video rooms are right next to the dugout because of instant replay and, you know, it, it's not a surprise that something, this, something like this went on. We're talking to the four-time World Series champion and former All-Star Jeff Nelson, who was a pitcher on some incredibly great teams. And that's been the source of our great debate series today. So, Quickly on the 98 team, Jeff, I mean, you guys had to know. Now, you were on the Yankees starting in 96 and were there until 2000. You had to know at that point how good you were, right? We 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 did. You know, I think we had a little chip on our shoulder from 97 and get knocked down against the Indians. And, you know, going into that year, you know, going into that year, we were 1-4. I, mean, I think we were 0-4. Oh we didn't win our first game until the fifth game of the year, and that was in Oakland. So it didn't start out too well, and you know all the all the papers were saying, okay, this might be Tory's last last hurrah. <laughs> and the next thing you know, we win 114 games. And the funny thing of it is, the last game of the season. So they printed out they printed out this team picture of the '98 team, and I think the '61 Yankees. I'm not sure which one. The the, the one that was they kept comparing the '90 90, '98 team to. They put our record on this before even the last game was over at 113 and 49 and we actually <laughs> won that game so what that photo doesn't even it was wrong so it was uh it was interesting that they, they would do that that early but it was just an incredible team it, it seemed like every time we walked out on the field that we knew we were going to win and if we lost it was a shock Jeff, it's funny. We were looking at a lot of Yankees teams on this list, and there are some teams in the 2000s that arguably have better players. Hall of, you know, they stacked with Hall of Famers all over the lineup, but they didn't seem like they were as great a team. When you think about what's a great team, does it is it the best collection of talent, or is there more to it? I think it's the best collection of talent. I think you know sometimes when you have superstars, it. it I think it gets overlooked and maybe those guys are, are, are maybe more of a point of emphasis than just a complete team and that's what we were i mean i don't think we had a guy hit 30 home runs you know we had maybe 10 guys hit 10 plus home runs i mean you know our our nine hole hitter eight hole hitter scott brosh has had 98 99 rbis i mean you know our bullpen was really good our starters were were great uh it was 
you know, playing in New York, it was just different because you had Mr. Steinbrenner. We had the media was outrageous as far as the amount that covered us. You had the fans, the expectation level. So uh, it, it was always, I guess, not stressful, but it's always a must win every single day that we went out there. And once Mr. Steinbrenner passed away and the media got a little soft, I think, you know, it changed. But I think it was more of a collection of talent than just superstars on, on, their, on their own. I mean, you had Jeter. I mean, we had tons of superstars, but they all played together. Jeff Nelson is our guest, four-time World Series champion. He's a former All-Star. We're talking about great teams of the last 30 years. Jeff pitched on many of them. Now, Jeff, the one team we left out, and we had a very big debate about this, Perloff and I did, is the 2001 Mariners. I mean, to still hold the record, 116 wins. Obviously, though, you guys lose to the New York Yankees in the ALCS. Did we make a mistake, or how big of a mistake did we make by leaving off those 0-1 Mariners? No, no, I don't think you made a mistake. I mean, you look at the teams you had, didn't they win the World Series? All of them won the World Series. Yeah. Um, we didn't finish it off. You, you know, we had a great year, uh, 116 wins. I mean, who knows if that will ever be accomplished. May 114 may never be accomplished again. But you got to win the World Series to be a, to be a, a great team and, and a, at least be in the top five. You know, they might not even be in the top 10. Hey, you know, if you start going back to some of the Yankee teams that won the World Series way back in the 60s and, and those years. So, no, I don't think you got it wrong. I mean, we had guys that were inexperienced as far as playoffs. I mean, we had the same feeling as the 98 team. Every time we stepped on the field, we felt we were going to win. And if we didn't, you know, we, it was it was a shock. But going into the playoffs, I mean, we're playing against the Yankees, who I was over there in 2000. So <laughs> I knew what kind of experience and that they had. And, and that, that experience in the playoffs, I think, is everything. Jeff, you played in an All-Star game in 2001 in Seattle. There were eight Mariners on that All-Star team. I just looked back at it, and it was in Seattle, like like this week's game. Do you have any memories from that Seattle All-Star game? Something you you the team you were facing was loaded with Hall of Famers, and I know you pitched. Do you remember uh, any anything significant about that game? Yeah, you, you know, I just coming over, and you know, I was a Yankee in 2000, and all of a sudden I'm a Mariner in 2001. So I think the Yankees had seven guys, and we had eight. And, you know, both of my managers that I played for for 13 of my years was Joe Torre and Lou Pinella, all the Yankee coaches that I had the year before. So I'm going in and I'm saying, hey, this is this is very uh, – the nerves are all gone. I, mean, <laughs> I don't have – I look behind me, and half of my team or my teammates were, were behind me, Alex Rodriguez, who I played – with as a teammate early in Seattle. You know, I think Cal Ripken Jr. I knew really well. He used to play basketball at his house when I lived in Baltimore where I grew up. Uh, Kirby Puckett, I was, they just televised a little bit of it on the baseball network. They replayed the 2001 All-Star game. And, you know, just some of the players, I was like, oh, wow, I, I forgot that Kirby Puckett was there. <laughs> you know, you had Robbie Alomar. I mean, you walk into the locker room, and the nice part of it is I didn't have to clear out my locker. I just went to my old one. <laughs> But the guys that you're playing with, I mean, these, these guys are superstars, and it, it was just an honor. And we wanted to win. I mean, we, you know, I, I know it was an exhibition, but for me, I wanted to win. I, you know, I, I'm like, I'm not losing this game. So it, it was exciting. Jeff, last one for you. And again, thanks for taking the time to do this today. We're talking about great teams. You pitched on so many of them. When the first thing that comes to mind, like gut reaction, when I say the best team you ever faced, who were they? Ooh, um, I would say the Texas Rangers when I played either in Seattle or New York. When you look at the lineup that they had, when you had Palmero, you had Juan Gonzalez, Pudge Rodriguez, you had Ruben Sierra, Juan, uh, Jose Canseco, Dean Palmer, uh, you know, I know him, Julio Franco. That was probably the toughest lineup I've ever faced. I mean, those guys were just, you know, I'm probably missing even a couple of them out there. But it was, uh, that, that was the toughest 